Five tips for customizing forms and reports in QuickBooks Online. The first thing I want to have you do is go into the settings area and go into the company settings. And what I encourage you to do is actually go through all of these sections so that you can become familiar with the different options and decide what is going to most or best suit your needs. So I'd certainly encourage you to do that. And what I really want to show you right here right now is in the sales area, you want to make sure that you turn on custom fields. And as I click in here and I can turn them on, you'll see that I've already set up and I'm going to use the property management example here because it was that sort of context that inspired me to do this video. In the first place, there was information in the help files, which is from the Intuit online community, suggesting that this couldn't be done in QuickBooks Online. So once again, when I hear that something can't be done and I know that it can, I immediately set out to prove the naysayers wrong. So you go in here and you're going to define your custom fields. I, I have rent, square feet, and security deposit. These are the pieces of information we're going to need to put together the closest thing we can get to to what's comparable to what's called a rent roll report. And then as you check off internal, these public options will come alive as well. So we definitely want them available both internally and publicly. And you'll see what that's going to do. Um, so I'm going to cancel because I already had all this set up for you. But that's one thing you definitely want to do is go into the settings and turn on the custom fields. And then the second tip is, of course, to define those custom fields, right? So we've already got two tips out of the way. Now we're going to use those fields on an invoice. So let me take you back over to my tenants, which I set up. That's also something you can change in the settings. You can you know, change what a customer is called. And the very fact that they have tenants uh, in the list tells you that QuickBooks Online has already been built with some infrastructure where they've actually thought ahead about the fact that somebody may want to use this to track tenant rent. So for somebody in the community to go out there and say QuickBooks Online can't do this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But let's see how it looks in an invoice. So we're going to go into uh, Tenant Acts. I prepared two invoices for them. And you're going to see what happens here. I'll go to the oldest invoice first. And when you turn on those custom fields and define them, they will appear right here at the top of your invoice form. So you're going to want to put, even though it's redundant, I know we have $3,000 here as part of the transaction, you're going to want to put it in here anyway. And, and the reason why is because putting it here enables you to have it show up on a report, right? And that's what that's going to be the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, used, using the custom fields in the invoice here is tip number three. Tip number four, which is going to be next, is customizing a report to include those custom fields. So get them on the invoice form. Make sure that you include them in a saved transaction and then save it. And we're going to say yes. And now I'm going to take you over to customize a report. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to reports. And now this is tip number four, customize a report to include those custom fields. Under all reports, and I'm already into the managed accounts receivable area, we're going to bring up the tenant, go away. We're going to bring up, go away. We're going to bring up the tenant balance detail. Those pop-ups can be helpful if you're new. They can be incredibly annoying if you're old. Not old as in age old, but old as in I, I know how to use the product. Urgh. Come on, hurry up. So we have a standard tenant balance, which is a customer balance detail report. We're going to choose customize. And I'm going to show you, but I've already got it memorized to save time. So I'm going to show you how to customize it, and then I'm going to just go over. So we're going to click change columns. And you're going to start to see as you scroll down, here are those custom fields that we've created. And look at this. I can actually uh, multiple select these. Control click, add, and then you'll want to reorder these. So let's move them all down. Ah, it won't let me move them as a group. How annoying. All right, cancel, cancel. Let's go back to reports. You're going to want to reorder them, and I'm going to show you what this looks like because I've already got it set up in my custom reports. We're going to go to the rent roll. I named it rent roll. And it will load, I promise. There it is. So now you can see how nice this looks on the report. I've got my, uh, probably want to be more consistent about how we, def you know, put in the numbers. You know, whether we choose to include the decimals or not, we should be consistent about that. 
Um, and, and then, of course, what's going to happen is once you create one of these, you're going to memorize it so that it will automatically shoot off every month and it'll already have all that information in. So it's not like you have to keep doing it. So this is how you get a, sort of a mock rent roll report. It's not perfect. You know, and a true rent roll doesn't really have balance forward information. It just has a list of all the units and all this kind of information. But I figure why not combine the two concepts into one? I can't imagine it could possibly hurt to have a rent roll report that also shows you how much your tenants owe you. I, I don't know. I'd be surprised if anybody would complain about having that information. Last tip, show the summary on the invoice form. All right, so let's take a look at what that looks like. Let's go over here. We're going to go back into We're going to go to custom form styles right now. You can get there either way. But here we go straight in. We're going to edit our form. And right here under appearance, we're going to choose this option here that says show tables. This will not be checked off by default. Mine is checked off because I did it beforehand. So you're going to have to go in here and actually check this off. And as you can see, it gives you the table that shows the balance forward new charges and the total amount due. Now, one thing that's really important to note here is that this table will only show up when there's history. So if you post one invoice and you check that box off and then preview that invoice, you're not going to see anything. It's only when you have two or more invoices, when you have some history, that will start showing you. And I'll show you what it looks like because that's why I went ahead and created two invoices so that it would be certain that I could demonstrate this for you properly. So let's go into Tenant X's Transactions. And we'll go into the most recent invoice. And then down below, Printer Preview. Printer Preview. And wait for it to load. Bam! So now you have your beautiful invoice template and there's your summary right there. The summary appears before the current activity. If, if I had my druthers, I would actually have this at the bottom. But I don't have my druthers here. I just have QuickBooks Online and what they've given me to work with. So uh, maybe they'll hear that feedback and change that or give us the option for where we want it placed. Um, but as of right now, this is what you got. So it shows you the account summary and then it shows you the current activity. And then at the bottom, it just confirms total of the new charges is 3000 total balance due 6000 My friends, as always, I hope you've had some fun and learned something along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. This has been five tips for customizing forms and reports in QuickBooks Online. I look forward to seeing you on the web.